Hello everyone, and welcome to a playthrough of Firewatch. Uh, I have not played this game, I don't know the controls, I've seen a little bit of it, I, I know, you know, general idea. I'm a forest ranger, and gotta do forest rangery stuff. I've heard good things about it, but I didn't go too much in detail. I like to keep these games kind of fresh until I play them. I don't like to, you know, go on to forums and look up details and spoilers and all that. So we're jumping in fairly blind, but I, I think that's good. I think that's a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and play. New game. Let's do some forest rangery stuff. Maybe find a yogi bear. That could be fun, right? Put out some forest fires, maybe? I'm looking at my uh, recording stuff here. It looks like the volume might be a little bit on the loud side of the game. Ooh, I see Julia. What is this? It was Col Colorado sometime. I didn't really read the rest of it. She's about my age, late 20s, laughing, well-dressed professor, grad student from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, that's me, I'm Henry, are out drinking with your pals. I don't do that. But I guess maybe they're drinking, I'm having some root beer, glass of milk's typical. <laughs> You are drunk. No, I'm not. I don't do that. I'd be blunt. Tell her she's pretty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should be reading these out loud. You're pretty, she says coolly. You're not. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh, that's nice. She got me a she got me a cheeseburger. I like the cheeseburgers. All right, I'm gonna turn down the volume here because I'm pretty sure it's just ever so slightly too loud. I'm gonna make sure you can hear both me and the game. <coughs> All right, so right trigger to use objects. I guess I need to put this on. Give my back a pack a. Okay, I'm in a garage with, okay. At first it looked like there was no way out, but there is. Okay, I got a sprint here with my... Well, I always forget what they call this key. Oh, jeez. Gotta mute that. Sorry. Let's go ahead and load my gear in here. Shut it. Yeah, good job. Oh, I don't get to drive the car. We date for a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. I move in. We share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. I wouldn't do that. You drink beer just about anywhere. Nope, I don't do that. She wants a doggy. I like a doggy. There's a scruffy undersized beagle. Julie is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. To class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing had, nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badish. Huh. Shepherd named Mayhem or a beagle named Bucket. Well, as with all things where I don't really know and it doesn't seem to matter to me, I'm going to flip a coin. Heads. Gonna go with the beagle. That's what she wanted. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. I love him, too. 
1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good, good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. They'd be pretty good. Or one day, why rush? I am currently in the thought in my own life of maybe one day, but I'm not in a rush. She looks away out toward the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, I assure her. This isn't the whole game right. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's... I've seen other stuff. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says. One day, she says. Six months later, you get engaged, lying in bed on a Sunday morning. It's not very romantic, but okay. Okay, okay. So I'm out in the woods here. I'm guessing... So that's all backstory... We're probably going to keep going back to that, I guess. But here I am now. Take a good look at this map here. Though I don't know why, because it didn't tell me where I am, so... Yeah, I was looking real quick to see if there was a You Are Here tag, but I don't see one. No fireworks. Don't forget to check in. You are in their country. Through our trail is not recommended for inexperienced hackers. Alright, well, I think I'm a little bit more experienced than inexperienced. Can I go off path here? Nope. Always gotta test stuff like that, you know? 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. Don't get angry, dude. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You fight when she get. That's weird. Uh... Hmm. Flipping another coin. Heads. I get mad. I wouldn't get mad, but he got mad. You call her an inconsiderate a-hole. She tells you to F yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Oh. Poor guy. 81. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Do I frolic or do I he man? Why not? I frolic like a Victoria's Secret model because I'm sexy, you know? Very sexy. Julia was white. Blah, blah, blah. Julia was right. You were very pretty. Very pretty man. That's me. That's me. And if you ever question how pretty I am, check out that thumbnail. So I'm guessing it's evening because everything is very, very orange. No, orange and red. And it's not even a red, it's. Cerulean? No, that's... Cerulean's more of a red than this is. Maybe a crimson. Is that, that what that color's called? 82. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at Night. That's our beagle, in case you forgot. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. That fool. That fool. Bucket gets kick. Bibi ba f du du dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking. Apparently, when she is stressed, you confront the attacker. The attacker. I can't speak today. I cannot speak. Do I scare him away or do I? Beat his face in. In real life, I'd probably just scare him away. I'd try and keep violence. 
I try and keep violence to a minimum if possible. Although if I do the mugging me with a knife, I can't guarantee anything. So, but anyway, <clears throat> you reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare off all three of you. You manage to scare all three of you. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Because that's not a place where creepy people go. 84 plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if she commutes back and forth. I mean, if it's her, if it's her calling, it's her calling. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. That's right. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. That's expensive. 85. Julia's sent home from Yale and paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. Alright, so I say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it or make macaroni and drink wine to try and forget about it. Well, I feel like this is talking about therapy, and I don't think that actually does anything for anyone. I mean, I'm sh I'm sure it helps, but I don't think therapists are actually any different than just talking it out with someone. So, I mean, in real life, I would I would try and talk it out with her, or at least get her to talk to her friends or her mother or father or something, but. Since I have a feeling that's talking about a therapist, I'm going to go with make some macaroni. It works. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. That's an old show. I guess this was 85, so yeah. Dallas. <clears throat> Alright, so here we are. Got my journal. I can't move, so I guess I'm sitting. Ooh, pretty sky. And butterfly. Those particles are. Yeah, I guess that's just particles moving around. All right, let's read our journal here. Or write in it. I'm not sure. Oh, oh my goodness, that's me. That. Oh, hmm. I could have gone my whole life without seeing that. I wonder if I need to blur that. <laughs> Wow. Bucket's getting older. Julia comments that it sounds kind of nice, but she gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. Is this dementia? That's not for old, that's for old people though. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. <clears throat> now that's a commute. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 88. You spend your days following Julia around the house. 
You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. Decide to move her into a full-time care or determine to take care of her by yourself. I'm going to do that myself. You know, at, at a home, you don't know what kind of care they're taking of the person. I mean, you got to trust them, but maybe you don't want to, you know. Well, this is a pretty setting. I really like the foliage. They've done great work on the foliage. Now the terrain, like those little rocks over there, not so much. Those need some bump maps. Need some bump mapping. It's all pretty flat. Hello, deer. What up, big guy? Yeah, hey, see ya. Nice deer. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her. Like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college, basketball in the winter, drinking then too. Nope, I would not be. Because I ain't that person. Uh, why do they have to make me drink? You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door, or you trust that she is sleep that she sleeps like a rock. I wouldn't do either. You lock her in her room or you leave her to chance she could who knows what. I don't like either of these options. Why why you gotta make me choose one of these? Uh, jeez. I mean, I definitely don't want to barricade her in her room. That's that's like abuse stuff. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 89. One night you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Of course, somebody's got to take care of, uh, Julia? Is that her name? Yeah. Julian's parents, Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. So is that where we're at now? Enter the lookout tower. So she's off in Australia. Just chilling with the parents and I'm here working. Set the setup. Very aesthetic game. At least in the distance. The close up, a little messy on the textures, but that's picturesque right there. I wonder if there's a way to turn the crosshair off though. I know where the center of the screen is. I don't need a little circle ruining my ruining my view. Can I turn that thing off? Toggle head bob, but I guess I just gotta live with it. 
this place has seen better days. There's another tower. They've got much brighter lights than I do. Guess that's the only tower other than me right now, or at least in this area. Okay, I guess I, apparently I missed the door. Where's the door? There's the door. Just smack that thing. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Ooh, I got a zoom button. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... Sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Hmm. No, wait. Oh, okay. You're just gonna wait me out on this? Ugh, fine. But I'm gonna take a second here and have a guess about you. Fine. fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Huh. Well, that was interesting. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. That's creepy. All right. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah. Jesus, I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, five. What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to. Oh, fuck me! Good god, language, lady. Out your Seriously. Window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? West facing. Are those fucking fireworks? Which way is west? I don't have a compass. Oh, I do have a compass. I need you to confirm. Do you see them? I am pressing the down button. Nothing's happening. Seriously, are you seeing this? I'm trying to. Fireworks, there we go. Henry! Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set him straight. Do 
you think you can handle that? Like, kick the shit out of him sort of straight? No, 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 no. Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Huh. Secure. Shut up. All right, well... So... Why is my compass not working? It's problematic. That's not what I'm using. Well, I don't know what to do about that. It doesn't have a, there's no option to re-assign keys here. So I have no camera, no map, and no compass without these buttons. That's not good. Alright, I'm going to try and figure this out. Um, in the meantime, I guess I'm going to end the episode here. It's getting kind of long. So, introduction over. Don't forget to smash that like button and grab yourself a sub sandwich. Come, uh... Whoops, what'd I do? You come back a uh, couple days and we'll have a new episode for you. Alright, I'll talk to you then.